there are ways to add color without just doing one plant or the other. Um, if you mix it up, you get seasonal color throughout the year and not just once in time of the year. Here in the springtime, we have um, usually forsythia are the first plants to flower and they have beautiful yellow flowers. As you go through the season, it's nice to have something that's always there so you don't have this push of flowers and maybe April and May and then the rest of the season, not much. When you start out with the forsythias, you may notice when you come in, there's some pumpkin grass out there by the gate. And uh, it, the thing that's nice about pumpkin grass, it usually doesn't get going with those plumes until late August, early September. And those are still doing okay, doing nicer than mine, which have gotten a little beaten up in the storm. So the key is, say you start out with forsythia, you end up in the season before everything goes dormant with the pompous grass out there. And in between, the goal is, what else can I do? What can I do so I have color from one month to the next? One plant sort of is, is you know, finished with its blooms, another one comes along, and that's, that's a great approach. And that's something that we can help you with. And people don't buy plants that aren't blooming, or, you know, so your landscape project is not gonna be a, I'm going to get everything today and we'll be done. It, it's kind of an ongoing thing. So don't be disappointed because you can't find that great myrtle in April. They, they, you just won't have them. Um, because they don't start blooming until June. Um, if we get them in April, you're going to be looking at sticks. No one wants to buy sticks. But, like Doug said, the forsythia are going to be blooming. Your lilacs are going to be blooming. So, kind of think seasonality so, you know, you're starting with the spring bloomers, and then you move into that summertime where you get your quick fertiles, your rosa sherrods, and things like that. Um, and there's stuff that blooms all the time. You know, butterfly bushes will bloom usually from May all the way through summer, and then even fall. Um, autumn sage is a great pop of color. It, it also helps with butterflies and hummingbirds if, if you like those to come to you and you like to watch them those are great plants to have in your landscape because they will be that um, so think of seasonality is you know you can actually learn to budget you know i'm, I'm going to do this much in the springtime i'm going to do this much in the summer and this much in the fall it'll make it easier for you to get it done and planted um, or whether you have us planted or you know a lot of people have one of their own little gardeners and landscapers that will do that for you. Sometimes when you move into a house, maybe it's been recently built, what's often the case is that the builders have to kind of put in the minimum requirement. You know, it's maybe one evergreen, one deciduous, and three shrubs, and that's the front yard. And so, okay, you've got that as a start, but that may not be everything that you want. I uh, recently visited the customer, and they had mostly evergreens, and they looked nice, they were in good shape, they were mature, and they were hiding the walls and then serving the function. So we talked a lot about, let's add some color. Yeah, it's going to be deciduous, and the leaves will fall and, and, and fall off in the, in the wintertime, but you'll get a contrast. Instead of more evergreens without much in the way of color or flowers, let's add some color. The, at the other end of the weather spectrum, of course, then is uh, the cold factor in the winter. Everything that we have here, all of our perennials, all of our fruit trees or ornamental trees, they are all cold hardy, almost all of them. So that means they, they can survive to zero, minus 10. If it gets colder than that, then it seems unlikely that I feel like we're living in the wrong place. However, the fruit trees, they want a cold snap in the wintertime. They want a certain number of cold hours, chill time. And so, a lot of these evergreens, you know, they, they may go dormant, they look kind of unhealthy in the wintertime. That's just part of the deal. They survive, they're okay in the cold weather. Same thing for the roses. And roses, you don't have to, you don't have to mulch them with bales of hay. And maybe we do that in other parts of the country if it's cold. But roses will survive the winter. My roses haven't even lost all their leaves yet. They're not flowering, but they still have leaves, even though they're supposed to be uh, deciduous. But a lot of times the other thing people will do is we have a great selection of annuals, you know, flowers and vegetables in the summertime. And you could do a mix and match. You've got your perennials that are going to be there every year, but they could be complemented in flower beds in a pot with annuals that you just change next season and put another batch in. 
as, as, as you like them, as you see fit, as you see what looks healthy and appeals to you. So don't be afraid to mix and match in the, in the landscape because um, even um, pansy, for example, are famous around here for winter color. They are annual flowers, more or less, but they will survive cold and hail storms. And I grew pansies for years, and my neighbors would say, oh, look at your pansies, they're under three feet of snow. I said, so what? They're fine. They didn't believe me until the snow melted and looked great. Finally, after about 10 years, the Havelina discovered my pansies. So, uh, that, I couldn't do too much about that. They, uh, they dug them out, I decided they didn't like them, but they made a mess, and it was unfortunate. But usually, they don't seem to like them. They stayed away for 10 years, because it just took them a while to find them. But uh, when you're looking for which color, uh, in the fall, we have pansies and chrysanthemums. Uh, they're really beautiful, they give you a lot of color. But that time of year, when things are kind of winding down in the rest of the garden, and that's the great thing about here, when like I said, the candies, the snapdragon stock, they'll bloom most of the winter. Um, we will actually carry them through May um, for that early spring time color. Um, probably February, we'll get a new shipment starting in. Um, as soon as March gets here, we'll, we'll really start ramping up as far as your annual color. Um, I had this guy come in uh, not too long ago in the fall, and big guy, biker, you know. These little guys really have the long name. It's like, who is this a pansy? It's so tough. And, and, and like Doug said, you, you can brush off the snow, and there they are, and, and they're just happy to be. So there are ways to get color all year. 